Why, hello there. Hello. How's it going? It's okay. How are you? I think I'm really good. I'm nice. I'm just feeling pretty great today. Happy New Year's Eve, by the way. Happy New Year's Eve to you too. We're almost there. Get me out, honestly. Get me out. <laughs> Get me out of 2023. No, uh, it's been okay. You're on call to talk about the great things that happened in 2023, and that's why you're leading. <laughs> with... Yeah, 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 yeah. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Wonderful. I think it's um... all about a. Uh... Optimism in the face of adversity. That's the theme for my 2023. And a lot of good things have happened. Just yeah. a lot of change, which is change. Mm -hmm. Also, my cats are attacking me because my wife isn't home. Ah. Uh, to introduce pastry time. How does one introduce pastry time? This is pastry time. Oh boy. Hello. Pastry time. I know you... Uh... Or like first knew of you through your League of Legends casting, but mm -hmm. it's certainly not the I... only thing that you've done. No, I think League is the the most common thing, and it's crazy to me how many people I've met, mostly on the internet, that are like, "Oh, I know who you are," and like a field that is completely unrelated to League. Mm -hmm. um, so most people will know me from casting League. Um, I haven't cast League in a minute, unfortunately, but I've been doing a lot of production, so a lot of behind the scenes stuff still on the LCS. Still in the same league I covered for six or seven years. Uh, you've seen a lot of my work, or at least the influence of my work, in a lot of places, and hopefully in more, uh, both within the LCS and outside of it. You're doing a lot but of. Yes, most people know my voice from casting. Mm -hmm. Done a lot of stuff with, like, like um, small segments between games kind of content is what you're making, right? Yep, lots of YouTube content as well. So. Lots of, like, lots of shoulder content. Some of it's gone on the broadcast, some of it's just been for social or YouTube, but uh, generally, the thesis was, like, if we're making something, we should probably put it in the place that most people see it, and it turns out most people watch the broadcast, so... Most of the stuff I made, even if it wasn't intended for the broadcast, ended up on the broadcast in some capacity. Sure. Makes sense. Can I... Whatever you want. Get immediately emotional with you? <laughs> Because because visiting LA, visiting LA was one of the exciting parts of the year for me. I lived in LA for three years or so and was in a really bad relationship in my early twenties. And after it ended, I also I lived in LA when I was playing online poker and the websites got taken down. And then a week later, my ex's mother was diagnosed with. Uh, terminal cancer and it was not a good couple of weeks and I like stuck around LA for a year and a half and things just kind of like were all terrible and then eventually I came back to Seattle and I hadn't really been back to LA since then and this year I took a trip to LA in the end of winter I think before spring arrived to Seattle to see some sun and some friends I just had so many people I'd met online who were in LA and I was like, I need to meet these people. That was one of my goals this year to meet lots of people who I had met online. And you picked me up from the airport. I was like, oh yeah, I'm a specialist. Yeah, I'm I'm going to be emotional. This is scary. I'm walking through this airport that I have so many strange memories in. And, and then I got like wonderful, friendly, car service from the airport to a really nice restaurant that had bread um mm -hmm. which i love bread is my favorite thing and it's got to there. got to hang out with you and that was it was such a lovely way to wander yeah, back into great. la that's awesome i think when i think of the things that are have really impacted me positively this year and again any year that's been full of change and has been tricky um I think meeting like-minded people and meeting people where I think like I know this is a big thing for you know the charity you're promoting but I think it's like a generally true statement for people is that like someone having your back is really important and I think sometimes uh, especially in work where 
you feel really isolated, whether it's your job itself is naturally isolating or you just do a lot of work and aren't necessarily good at asking for help uh, and just kind of solo a bunch of stuff because it's easier in the short term to do so. It's easy to forget how important people are in just impacting you and making your work and your personal life better. And uh, it's funny you mentioned that meeting because one of the things that I've taken away that I'm still thinking about right now sitting in this chair is uh, I think I said like I'm having trouble figuring out what I want to do because again I was going through a lot of change this year and I'm still going through some of that if not a lot of it and I said I said to you like one of the things I really want to do is create more I think like feeling like I'm making something whether it's for just me or for other people uh, whether it's lucrative or not is really important to me. And I think sometimes when you work on something, you make things for that product, not necessarily for yourself. Uh, and you said like, oh, you should just do it <laughs> or something like that. And I've taken that thought with me through the entire year and I'm going to take it into next year. And it's something that like, I can't stop thinking about because like, it's such an, it's such a simple concept, but it's a really important one. And I think it's one that you can't really appreciate until someone else tells you. And you were the person that told me, you were the first person to tell me Hey, you should just do it. Yeah, look at me. Yeah. So now I'm trying to figure out what that is, but I've been doing a <laughs> lot of things in my spare time. <laughs> I have a lot of plans for next year. So with any luck, uh, you'll see things pop up in a bunch of different spaces potentially. But uh, I am I think I'm definitely in the like, make as many things as possible and just get back into the, the idea of creating. And it doesn't matter how good it is, just make things, get them out there, and then see what happens. And then eventually I'll figure something out. That's really exciting. I'm very excited for you. I am having a... Uh... <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not gonna talk about that. I, go in there. I know a lot of very kind people. I can generalize, mm -hmm. I can generalize a statement <laughs> instead of making it specific. I know a lot of very kind people who are very thoughtful, they do things for others a lot. And something that has been a recurring thing for me this year and getting to know people better has been trying to convince these incredible people I know to take some time for themselves. Like, so many people care so much about so many things in the world and they are such incredible people who could be doing their thing instead of caring about some other person's thing to make sure it went well and it's been really exciting to me to see people who have started to get that going in my book i write a lot about my manager hannah who went from working for an esports team where she was like just generally not valued or appreciated at all to um like managing streamers on her own and sending invoices to people under her own company name and Seeing a few people work that stuff out has been incredibly rewarding for me this year. Yeah, that's awesome. I think it's funny. I'm like, I was obviously on a talent for a long time. And that's still a skill set I have. Still something I'm looking to try and do some of. I did a little bit this year, which was great fun. But it's one of those things that doesn't really leave you. Like, I'll always have the skill because I did it for a decade. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I think the thing that I found challenging was that I am someone that loves to work with people. Like, I really like the team, the teams of people I've worked with across my career have been incredible. And they've been and working with people working together is something that's really important to me. And I think something about making things for yourself that can be tricky is like, well, if I'm doing it myself, I don't necessarily have people to work with. Or yeah. like, I don't have a like, you know, like, you know, when you feel like the the bottleneck or the, the sole point of failure, <laughs> it can be very stressful. But it turns out like, even if you're a solo content creator, say, or a solo streamer, you have a network of people and I'm sure you've discovered a lot of that this year is you've met a bunch of the people that you've known on the internet uh this oh, 100%. year percent yeah it turns out like yeah people are people are still there even if you're doing your own thing in very big cartoon like air quotes yeah well I'm very very excited for you I was gonna say I had a really good conversation with the um a few people from the TFT community earlier this week oh, nice. about the Las Vegas TFT thing and the ways that the TFT community kind of comes together for competition in a game that 
doesn't have a huge like pro competitive scene or anything and really it's built to be kind of a social party game uh more of a casual game than a competitive game but like they're doing all of these incredible things with building competitions for it anyway so that has been on my mind a little bit how do i get like even more of this also i know we won't talk much about the game but i am glad i tuned in for watcher because oh, I don't know how the rest favorite? of chat feels. I don't know about my favorite. I think Silence is probably my favorite character, but I appreciate that. Let me put it this way. I've played Magic for a long time. I'm a long time combo player in Magic. Watcher scratches like that part of my brain in a way that the other characters do. Yeah, that makes sense. I've been enjoying Watcher a lot. I didn't spend much time taking Watcher seriously when she came out. And... That means that she's kind of the character that I have the most left to learn on still, which is just cool to still be very much in the dark about some decisions as someone who's played the game for so long. Oh, for sure. I think it's fascinating to watch any game get played for a long time with little to no changes and see things still evolve. Obviously, like Melee is the best example of this probably as far mm -hmm. as games that are around go, but I think Watching, even watching just you play Slay the Spire, I'm like, yeah, things have changed a lot since I started watching Dwarves. Yeah. And yeah, that was a big patch and blah, 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 but like the game doesn't get changed that much and still figuring stuff out, deciding on different strategies you want to go for. It's really cool to see games evolve. It's like meta games are one of the things that draw me into gaming generally. It's why I've latched onto esports and competitive gaming for so long. It's because it's just such a deep environment where you get to see change over a generally a long period of time and... You can build upon the skills you gain as you learn more about the thing. Yes, yeah, so I was talking about this with Moda, who's a Trekmania player, earlier this week. I've had so many conversations this week now. You are here at the end of six and a half days of me just talking to people nonstop. So I may Ooh. reference previous conversations a lot, I'm realizing. Um, he was talking about how... When he's learning a Trek Mania track, he will not try to do all of the hardest techniques at first. Like, he'll take more conservative lines through the corners and everything, and then he'll start doing things like drift cancels and speed drifts and little cuts and stuff like that to fully master the track. And I was, when I was talking to him about it, I was like, hmm, I can't really relate to that. I feel like when I play a strategy game, I pretty much immediately, right from the start, I'm trying to play it at the max level. Um, but then thinking about it more just right now, when you're talking about how the game has kept evolving, I was like, hmm. But on the other hand, I kind of am doing it. I think I just like, maybe not realizing that I was, but so much of getting better at Slay the Spire has been like realizing the cards that I didn't use to click on very often can be used a little bit more than I thought they could and like really pushing myself to find every tiny situation where like I don't quite have to click on skip here I can actually click on a card that isn't great but is just barely worth having in in this spot even though I wouldn't usually take it yeah anecdotal but uh watching a lot of your act ones recently I've definitely noticed like you're taking more like i mean this is also like a product of act one okay this is i'm gonna go back to my original point before we get massively derailed but like i've noticed you taking a lot more subpar cards to mm -hmm. because you understand like oh this is just enough to get me through this specific portion of the act that if i don't i'm going to die so yeah. uh and that's a really cool thing to watch someone who's very skilled at the game uh learn about themselves and understand uh, and i've definitely noticed a lot more like I call them more minor optimizations for things like I need to kill Gremlin Knob. <laughs> so I need this shitty attack because if I don't, I might die and I don't want to die because it runs over if I die. Yep. Whereas me, I just send it. I'm like, you know what? If we die, it's fine. There's always the next run. Some of that is because for a while I was more curious about what happened at the end of the run than the start of the run too. And so I was kind of... I was playing runs in order to be well set up for endgame to try to see what sorts of endgame synergies were performing the best for me, which meant I was being uh, 
more cavalier about the chance of dying in Act 1 because I, like, didn't want to have to get to the end of the run with, like, I don't know, a streamline in my deck or something. Streamline's kind of fine, but, like, you know, that sort of idea. Didn't want to overload my deck with bad damage commons and then play the rest of the run and get to the end of the run with five damage commons in my deck still and not actually be playing a late game build and feeling like I was learning much from it. I don't know if that makes sense. No, that totally does. Yeah. Uh, it's funny because I think you and I are somewhat similar in how we approach games, even though we have somewhat different backgrounds. Like, we both have backgrounds in competitive things. Obviously, I'm a observer and interpreter of competitive things, but I played in, like, small matter tournaments. Like, I... In my, the, my younger days, I wanted to compete at things. Um, but I realized that I enjoyed the challenge of being good at something more than the joy of winning. Mm -hmm. And... I have someone that's talked to a ton of competitive people across lots of different spaces, mostly gaming and obviously mostly League of Legends, but the the number one certainty among competitors is desire to win. Uh, in some cases, above all else, thankfully in most cases, like it doesn't involve cheating, but like <laughs> uh, there's like a very obvious drive that, that drives competitors and they, they want to win. It's a thread you can always come back to. Uh, and the interesting thing is interpreting like, what things got them to that point? Because if everyone says, I just want to win at the end of their post game interview, it's not very interesting. So right. you have to like work backwards and uncover what things are interesting. And there's plenty of interesting things. But I'm someone that like, I just don't care that much about winning. And I, I've been watching your recent Against the Storm VODs because, oh my God, I am cripplingly addicted to that game. <laughs> but there was a thing where you said, I would rather die and learn than like win. And it's just, just like, there's not that much importance placed on winning and i feel that like the challenge and like joy of discovering something and figuring out uh how something works and understanding a system and like bettering your understanding of a thing is very joyful to me and even though i'm have been in competitive spaces for a lot of my life even though i've competed at things at lowish levels i just like i realize that it's like it's the journey of mastery that really intrigues me more than like gaining ladder points yeah I mean, that's why I have I a play... funny feeling you're similar. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I play a single player game instead of right. a game with competition. Uh, yes. Even I'm though sure you've, you've heard many me... competitive games. Yeah, but I'm sure you've heard the story of how I stopped playing Paper Magic tournaments. Or if I start I think... telling it, you probably have. Probably? I, I had someone like trying to play extra land drops against me. In oh the yeah, Swiss, yeah, yeah. and then in the top eight, I got paired against them again, and they looked at my full seventy-five cards when the judge was deck checking me um, in a like <laughs> closed list Magic tournament oh where I God. brought a rogue deck, and I was so Yikes. pissed off, and I just didn't yeah, yeah. want to be responsible for making sure my opponent wasn't cheating uh, in my happy time. <laughs> like my happy time yep. is being challenged by the game and trying to play as well as I can, and I want to focus on that and not be responsible for my opponent being a child <laughs> um, yep <laughs> so yeah that was how i ended up in well video games help because video games yes, will do. do the the rules for you you know um but eventually i just realized i wasn't getting anything out, out of having an opponent really just more fun to be on my own yeah for sure yeah i have a lot of it's even like it's funny because like you know i still play league every now and then but even when i was playing a lot of league after i got over the idea of like well climbing actually is like not important to me um and people would always be like man i hate solo queue i can't stand it. i'm like i actually really like solo queue like why what what could possibly push you to like this you know infamously cursed thing and i was just like well it's like if you just don't worry about what's happening like yes it's a team game it's frustrating when your teammates let you down but like you've entered into the like queue of the game where like you have to be self-reliant and if you just focus on your gameplay and improving you have a much more enjoyable experience i actually ended up much more enjoying solo queue than uh not more than full five stacks or silliness because that's always really fun but i enjoy solo queue way more than the average player i think and it's because i'm able to very easily separate the result from what i'm actually trying to do which is have fun and learn i also very much enjoy that about solo queue in league which i played for a while part of this year i like played i don't know i guess my yes. lol gg is public 
But I, I remember I, your journey. I got into my jungle and made it up to gold. Um, let's go. Let's go. Yeah, uh, it was just that people started yelling at me sometimes. <laughs> and then I was like, oh. Even if I'm just trying to do my own thing, this game still has other people in it. and It does, yes. Now I have to deal with them yelling at me. You do. That's what the mute function is for. Uh, I will say, I find... This is like a very niche thing, but in... I find it really fun to try and like get in the head of my own teammates and figure out what they're going to do. Because uh -huh. typically, at any level of play, especially lower levels, which is certainly where I am in League, uh, things happen that maybe you wouldn't see if you were used to watching 10 hours of pro games a week. Right. Um, oh, and it's really fun to figure out, like, what do I think my teammate's going to do based on how they're playing and how they're moving? And then actually capitalizing on those things and working with someone you've never met when you aren't in voice comms or anything with them. I found delightful, but I've also, like, pretty extensively studied play patterns of players across a very long period of time in this game. So mm -hmm. maybe that's, like, a... a Maybe that's a personal advantage I get for commentating for a song. <laughs> I think there's, I think that's such a, such a real thing. Um, at the at the top level of League of Legends, you still see divergence in how people play a little bit, but for the most part, it's like people have mastered the mechanics of the characters they are playing. They understand the importance of different objectives around the map. Um, there may be slight differences in how aggressive they are and how much they're willing to take coin flippy types of fights and things like that but like the players aren't that different whereas in silver or gold elo of league of legends like i was a player i think my macro is fairly solid in league of legends but i cannot click my buttons when i play re the charm will actually go directly the opposite way from who i'm aiming at and, <laughs> and because of that like the way that I should try to play the game changes. Like it doesn't really make sense yes. for me to go for like one v one duels if I know that I will miss every ability. Um, but if I like stand in a bush and people walk into me, I can kill them just fine. And so like I have yeah, yeah. to be a bit clever about it that way. And then other people like some people are actually coming from something that's more twitch oriented and they're like pretty good at fighting in lane, but they're not as clued into the macro elements of the game or something like that. And so they're going to like not realize a gank is coming or not rotate for an objective. And you can pay attention to that. But there's like, yeah, so much fluidity in a low level game compared to a high level game. So I could see that being really interesting to you. I've been noticing that playing a low level uh, Slay the Spire, actually. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like um, my decks that are really bad don't die because the difficulty yes. isn't high enough and so they reach the end of the game instead and then i have to work out like how on earth do you, these terrible cards uh beat the heart mm -hmm. and, and then that wins sometimes it wins i've lost to the heart twice ah. nice <laughs> not sure i have an opinion on cat girls sorry chat at some point, I lost control of my chat, and now they ask everybody their opinion on cat girls. <laughs> I That's okay. don't know. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'm already a weeb, though. That that I can guarantee. Just from joining the stream. Actually, from watching you on YouTube. Very consistently. <laughs> you, have, you have become a weeb a time or two, I imagine. Yes. Oh, yes. Many a time. I'm not even sure what that means. Weeb. But, uh, yes, I've been told that I am one too. Yep. I, I do know what weeb means. That was a lie. <laughs> a pretty bad lie. Well. Anyway, I know it's not the game we're playing, but thank you for more against the storm content. Like, I'm way too into that game. I'm making spreadsheets. That's how into this game I am. It's actually ridiculous. I care enough about what's happening to like what's write your, things down and learn from them. What's your spreadsheet about? Or spreadsheets? Uh, uh, honestly, the way I do spreadsheets typically is like, uh, I'm usually just cataloging information. Mm -hmm. uh, one, because like my general spreadsheet knowledge is very poor. And if I ever have an actual technical question, I just ask my wife because she's excellent at spreadsheets. Um, but it's things like 
I don't understand like the most efficient way to get to this like complex food. So let me just write down all the iterations and then organize them so I can figure out, oh, this is the best way to make biscuits. Because like, I think one of the things that's fun about the game is it's there's the, the sense of discovery is really lovely and the difficulty curve is really smooth, which is great for a very complicated game. I think I often get turned off by complexity in games because I find having to go through a bunch to learn the thing can be kind of daunting. Mm -hmm. It's it's like the paradox for me of like, I love the idea of playing really heavy board games, but investing energy into learning them yeah. feels very uh, challenging. And Against the Storm to me feels like a really good heavy board game, but it has all the advantages of digital and a very streamlined way to introduce you to the game. So I've just been like, I was doing a lot of just like, I'm just going to chill and figure it out. And I'm getting to the point now. I'm like, okay, I kind of need to like, streamline these things a little bit and i'm sure i could look things up or talk to other people but i'm enjoying the sense of discovery so much that i'm kind of doing it all myself and sure. i think at the end of it i'll feel much better because uh, i'll at least retain the information i've written down because if i just read what someone else has written i might not necessarily remember it if i take the time to actually learn it and write it down myself even if the spreadsheet is for nothing and writing down my thoughts i'm going to retain the information much better yeah i often uh often find myself doing that and people will be like hey I, I actually did this all for you here you go here's a list of all of the like events in the game or whatever and yeah i have to be like well i'm not actually going to learn it if i just read your list you know i yeah the act of writing this down is actually the point yeah i think a lot of people uh i mean going back to league i feel like that happens to a lot of people or even tft right where they're like oh i just want to play the best thing and i'm like if you don't understand why this is good and haven't like figured out how to get there yourself, doesn't matter how good Sentinel Ari is, you're you're not gonna know how to hit or you're gonna miss a comp that you could have taken earlier that would have gotten you the same or better spot. Like uh, I think lots of people, especially in the age where information is so readily available, think that shortcutting is like very clever and it's not. <laughs> or at least it's a lot less clever than you think in most cases. You still have to learn somehow. Like yes. some of your time is going to be about learning, and yeah, you can't you can't shortcut all of that out for sure. Yeah. But yeah, other than against the storm, uh, talk about Phoebe Bridges for like two hours probably. It's definitely been. I don't know about you. I've listened to so much Phoebe Bridges this year. Actually, I do know you've listened to so much Phoebe. Yes, Bridges I. This year, yep. It's like half of your stream music. Uh huh. Yes. Is Phoebe and Phoebe adjacent? Uh huh. I. Oh, she's so good. Got to see her live outdoors so in jealous. Seattle. It was my first concert post pandemic, and it was excellent. And she yelled really loud at the surrender to the sound part of um. Emotional motion sickness. Is that what it's called? Motion sickness. I think it's just called motion sickness. She yelled so loud. Anyway, it's a good Love show. That for her. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm going to try and get to a gig, I think, next year. I want to do this year, and then uh, we're not going to talk about it, but the way ticketing systems work, at least in this country, is uh, a little sussy, let's say. Mm. So it can be frustrating to acquire tickets for things you want because other people have decided to acquire them for you even if they don't want them and then try and price gouge the absolute shit out of you because i don't know that's sick i guess um but yeah i'm definitely gonna try and go see some music live i think it'll be a nice little goal for 2024 because you've Been done a like listen to an album every day the thing oh god year, yes right? <laughs> oh, i'm so glad it's over <laughs> um, yes i have done that. <laughs> oh okay i was gonna ask if you'd recommend it <laughs> uh so absolutely not uh but i think that <laughs> it was one of those things of like this sounds like such a good idea uh and it was a good idea but not for i very quickly like maybe less than 100 albums in realized that like oh this is like doing half of what i wanted it to do and the half it did was really helpful but the other half was just agony um i will say like the I wanted to listen to all music, and this was one of the ways to achieve that. And I think that intention was very powerful. Like, I learned very quickly that, like, oh, actually, setting aside time to do something, uh, thinking about what I wanted it to be, like, 
enjoying the art for like as it is was all like very helpful i was like oh this is great i should do this more often the problem is when you impose such a big limit on yourself you don't necessarily get all the benefits of that thing and there were so many times where i found myself being like oh the album was so good i want to listen to it again oh wow that was really interesting i kind of need another listen because i feel like i didn't fully grasp things that were happening or like it just was a little too complex to pass on one listen through uh, or I want time with a few more tracks and I just didn't have that time uh, so I do recommend listening to more music but next year is going to be a hundred that's the goal okay. so we're going to go from 365 to 100 uh, so about two a week I think is I'm going to chop it up and that will give me more time to actually digest things and if I end up listening to more that's like there's that's good that's a bonus thing I I don't recommend one a day unless you're so somehow starved for music that you need a very extreme thing to push you into listening to more music. But yeah, I, I can't, I can't recommend it. I had a group of friends when I was 20 or so. And we did a thing where every week one of us was in charge of picking something that everybody had to do. And it was stuff like you have to say hi to a stranger once a day, or you have to eat less meat this week, or something like that. And then the idea was, if you liked it, keep doing it, and if you don't like it, well, you tried it for a week, and that's cool, and, and now it's time for somebody else to suggest something. And somebody had a week where we listened to an album of music every day, and I definitely enjoyed it. I don't usually listen to albums of music at all, so that was kind of like novel to me. And I definitely okay. didn't do it anymore after after the week yeah, was yeah. over. <laughs> yeah, it was... I don't, I don't know. I just... I guess for me, I want to listen to the song I like the most. And the album feels like an imposition. I've, I've never really understood the like... Oh, the album is a, a full thing by itself where the the songs lead into the other songs and it's meant to carry a certain feeling and with the exception of maybe bitches brew which made me extremely upset the entire way through more and more and more uh, <laughs> so well done bitches brew uh it's funny i'm the opposite uh i mean i'll every now and then there's like i've definitely hit repeat on a song 10 times in a row and just been like, this is all I need right now. This is the best. Uh, in fact, that happened recently, <laughs> like uh, a week ago. I just like, well, this, this album was pretty good. It was short, but like the whole album kind of felt like it was leading into one song and the song was incredible. And I just spam listened to that song probably like 15 times in two days. It was so good. Um, but what? I am definitely what album an album that? listener. That was MS Paint's. Uh, oh, MS Paint's been recommended uh, before. What was that album? Hang on, let me once let me dive into the spreadsheet once again. I have a very big music spreadsheet, as you can imagine. Yeah, I believe you. At one point, I will share this so everyone can see what it is, rather than having to scroll through a Twitter thread. MS. Oh, Post American was the name of the album. All right. But the song I couldn't stop listening to was Titan of Hope. It's such a banger. It's it is my anthem for 2024, which I think Titan... says a lot about Titan. Titan of Hope. I think it's nice because it's like. Uh, God, this band's impossible to explain, but like synth punk, basically. Um, but there's a ton of optimism in the music that I find really, uh, really lovely. And that song is like basically an anthem for optimism. And it's, oh, it's just so good. Right. But I'm definitely an album listener. I love the experience of going through something kind of like a, like a novel or a movie. And just experiencing it holistically. But certainly, like, some albums, you just pull tracks out. And you're like, I don't need the rest of these ten things. I just need these two. So I think in a lot of ways, this project was about getting back to album listening for me. And now that I have listened to more albums than I may need in one single year, I can dial it back <laughs> to something that feels like more what I actually wanted originally. But I wouldn't have known that without doing this. So I don't regret the project yeah, at all. Sure. It's really cool. I just, I just can't recommend it. <laughs> How did you find the albums that you listened to? So this was an interesting one. Um, a lot of it was crowdsourcing. So I would ask people on Twitter and I got a ton of great suggestions throughout the entire year. I got so many when I announced the little project that I had a pretty good buffer 
the other thing that happened was like there were some albums that i was like oh i've always heard this is good i should probably listen to this like let me find an example uh, uh oh like yeah this is a great one like queens of the stone age songs for the deaf i'd somehow never listened to even though i knew the big songs from that album that album's incredible by the way definitely recommend that one but that was an album that like my friends grew up listening to that i had somehow just never listened to uh all of so listening through that whole album was really great so okay. some stuff like that, things that I knew that I'd like wanted to make time for that I just didn't, I made time for. But apart from that and crowdsourcing, honestly, like I just started like uh, the internet would recommend me albums, like my little newsfeed on my phone would just be like, hey, you should hear some album reviews. I'm like, oh, that's cool. Uh, I used like review sites. I used YouTube reviewers. Like I tried to source a really big pool of things to draw music from. And then I just kind of, I don't know, rolled some dice basically. <laughs> and uh figured out what I listened to from there. I also got a, uh, more than one album from your stream. I heard uh, one song on your stream. I was like, that sounds amazing. Let me go listen to the rest of this. Uh, and the big takeaway from that one was Lizzie McAlpine's album. Holy moly, is that a good album? Maybe I I'd should listen to the rest before. of the album too. Oh, it's so I, good. I sure haven't. Yeah, yeah. So, and we did some theme weeks. That was fun. I like picked a theme and people suggested things. Cool. The way that I listen to music on stream is very much that I set a seat for Pandora and then it plays and I don't yep. even look at the name of the song. So I don't even know what the song is that you're talking about. Um, uh, which makes me feel bad sometimes, but I don't know. I'm doing my best out here. Well, you need to do. It was, it might have been the title track actually. The album was Give Me a Minute. Double check the song. I think it might have been the title. Oh goodness. Last. Yes, I think it was the title track. Good album. Real good album. I told Ashley that I would ask you um, what you thought was contiguous. What you thought was appealing in Legends of Runeterra and Slay the Spire? Like, what's the thing that the two games share? That because you like Legends of Runeterra, right? I do. I'm I not, love Legends of Runeterra. Not out of my mind, yeah. No, no, I absolutely love that game to death. Um, do you think you could express what's shared between it and Slay the Spire? Or maybe there isn't anything shared. You just like it for completely different reasons, I guess. Yes, it's weird because like i mean i'm a, obviously like a so for those who don't know like i'm a long time magic player um i've been playing magic for like 24 years or so which is the only thing i've done uh that's the thing i've done most in my life the only thing i've done even close to that is commentate and play league which is about 12 years the magic dwarfs league of legends which is my career in a lot of ways um which is pretty funny and i think people sometimes get surprised when i tell them that but uh I don't know if you spend five minutes with me and mention magic i'll talk about card <laughs> games um so like legends ha legends of retire had the obvious overlap of like this was made for card game players and i have i am definitely a card game player i think slay the spire is interesting because like there is obvious comparisons or it's like the like it's also a card game uh and sure it operates differently than uh maybe a pvp card game does but there's lots of different things. There's, lot, there's enough similarities that, like, if you like card games, you'll probably enjoy this PvE card game, even if you are, you know, solely a competitive Magic player, which I certainly wasn't. But uh, I feel like the so Legend of Runeterra is just like an extremely well crafted card game. Um, I think Slay the Spire is also just an extremely well crafted card game. I think I can't think of that much overlap between the two of them, just because. The systems Legends of Runeterra have are based on an existing game, and then the unique twists in that game are so good that it holds up as its own game. But I think Slay the Spire does the same thing for its genre. Like, this is a genre-defining game. And I think if you like puzzles and like seeing how things interact with each other, you'll enjoy strategy games generally, and then you can kind of just pick, like, what form of, of puzzle <laughs> you want to try and approach. So I can't think of things that directly relate those games together other, other than they're both incredibly good games like mm -hmm. for their genre among the best games that have been made 
And I think maybe for me it's different because like I play LOR weirdly exclusively to like explore a system and I happen to be good enough at card games that I'm a relatively high level player. Not a pro level player, but like a, I'm a high level player of Legends of Runeterra, which is really weird for me. I'm not a high level player of anything, <laughs> typically. Um, and I really just enjoy like the process of climbing and figuring things out and in, like, playing in the system. There is like a, a roguelite adjacent yeah, mode I've a that I've played that. a decent amount of. Yeah, Path of Champions. I think uh, there's lots of things that are cool about that system, but that that mode did not grab me like Slay the Spire did, like mm. other roguelites have. Um, but I, and I think it's taken obvious inspiration from Slay the Spy, like many other games have within the genre or even like adjacent spaces to the genre. Yeah. Do you think yeah, Commander at Home is happening games. for the two of us? Oh, I hope so. All right. Cool. I, uh, um, I'm working on it. Let's put it that way. <laughs> All right. Cool. Uh, I'm sure they'd love to have you. I'm definitely working on it. That is, if there was a, if I, if there was a project I could drop everything and do, I would definitely that show is so sick. Um, so unfortunately, uh, in lieu of being able to drop everything, I am simply donating some time. So I will certainly drop your name in the hat. Uh, yeah, that would be really sweet. Oh yeah, that would be so sweet. I think I'm about to take <laughs> 60 damage from a spiker. That's very unexciting. Yeah, I know. Not a huge fan of it. Um, um, yeah, I like kind of know Brian and Olivia. But I don't like know know them, so it's a bit... We're in the middle place. Halfway between, like, oh yeah, get me on your show, and like, it is so nice to see you again. I have great respect for you. Yeah, that, yeah. That kind of zone. Yeah, I think, um, I mean, I don't know, but I, I'd i imagine you're a pretty attractive guest for the show. And it, I think it's going to come down to, like, what are they doing? How much are they filming, etc. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was surprised they wanted me on the show. I think I think it was a lot of, like, hey, we're getting Travis. You should come. But uh, it was super fun. That show's great. The people that work on that show are, like, excellent. It's actually, it's so hard to express this to people that don't, like, work on productions but like the scale of production on this show is like phenomenal for how small it is mm -hmm. um and the people working on it are like the people working on it could definitely be working on something else but instead they choose to work on this show <laughs> which that's is really great cool. because i think the show is great but like yeah the i mean maybe that's just an la thing you meet a lot of people who are producing well above <laughs> their grade mm -hmm. in a lot of cases but i guess that's what happens when you put an entertainment industry in one city and concentrate as much as you can. But yeah, the people that work on that show are great. Uh, and I'm very happy for how successful it's been for them, and I wish them all the best and more continued success. But I've definitely had chats to them where I'm like, hey, I have ideas. Listen to me. And they're like, sure. And then we talk. So one of the ideas will definitely be get Drobes on the show, which is why I tagged you in that tweet. I was like, unironically, Drobes would be a fantastic guest. You should try and get him on. Sweet. I'll PvP you. I'm one or no in competitive <laughs> commander. True, I did know about that. I uh I I think my shtick on the show is uh dying spectacularly. So I'll I'll likely continue that. You'll be an excellent foil to my I I don't even know. Yeah, I uh I may have antagonized Kibler. Oh uh, incidentally. And yeah, that gets you killed in games of commander. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even mean to, it just kind of happened. I definitely had a question for you, and I definitely don't remember what it was. We have about 20 we'll minutes come back. left. Well, I have 20 minutes left until my next guest, so we have about yes. 10 minutes left. Uh, do you have anything that you are looking forward to in particular in the next year, or anything that really stood out? this year or any message this is the question um if you could have people take one thing away from what you do in the world what would you like it to be that's the question i've been asking Ooh.
Well, that's so interesting because like, I feel like there's like two answers. The, the obvious one is like, I think being like being kind is not particularly costly. And I think that's a lesson I try and teach and take with me everywhere I go. So if I could just remind everyone to like not be a dick, <laughs> that would be great. And it's like, I think people assume for whatever reason that like being a nice person is really challenging when it's not. And it's very enriching and rewarding for lots of other reasons as well. And the things I do, I want to bring that energy with me. I've consistently been told I'm great to work with. And that is something that I take, I hold in very high regard because not because I want people to like work with me. Obviously I do, but being someone that like was joyful to work with on projects you work on, especially where the nature of my work is, I work on things that are somewhat transient. Like, you know, you do a two day shoot or a one day shoot or a season of LCS. And then it's done and you move on to the next thing. So having people take away like, oh, this guy was dope to work with. Um, he made me better. He made me enjoy my work more is really important to me. Uh, but like selfishly, I think I've always wanted to, I don't know. I feel like I have a lot to say and I've always wanted to try and find a way to communicate that to people. So, uh, I'm still trying to figure out how to make, like <laughs> create enough, uh, things that are memorable that people will remember them because for whatever reason, that's important to me, even if that's a bit silly. It's hard um, in the online age. Write a book. Yeah, definitely. Write oh, man. I. This is like 30 plus years of, of personal torment wanting to write a book. It's like, it's because, so for those of you who don't know, when I was little, uh, I told my family that I was going to be a novelist. That was my, like, that was my calling in life. That was the job I wanted. I, I did and not And they know said, that. that's kind of cool. They were like, what about making money i'm like not a <laughs> not an invalid point <laughs> mom and dad <laughs> so i was like, okay I'll, I'll 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 find another way to write for a living and then write on the side uh and so journalism was the natural inclination because uh it was you know uh maybe a more established job where you write things and get money for them and then that path led me to commentating weirdly uh even though i was at school trying to get an english degree and find a way to write. And I think I probably would have written about music, unsurprisingly. Uh, it's what I was doing at uni when I was there, for the brief period I was there. But writing was like hugely important to me. And then for some reason, I discovered gaming and I was writing actually when I first discovered esports. I was writing about Warcraft 3, but I just kind of got into commentating because I really liked esports. And I, it turned out that like writing on a page and improv weren't that different and i managed to build up enough reps and enough skill to be able to commentate games live which is not something i would have thought of myself as a young kid mm. not a performer absolutely still really not a performer if i'm being honest which is one of the reasons my career doesn't make that much sense to me yeah <laughs> but uh yeah i always wanted to write and i think it's something i still think about now and the thing that like at some point i informally gave it up i was like oh i don't want to write like oh i can write later was what i said and now it's quite a bit later and i'm like hmm maybe i should revisit that notion but it's one of those things where i think like uh i'm so intimidated by the scope of the work and the quality of it and all this other stuff that honestly doesn't matter um because it turns out when you're trying to create anything you should just start by creating and mm -hmm. I think that is something that when I was younger felt much easier and more unbridled. And now as I'm older, for whatever reason, I get in my own way. So I'm trying to not get in my own way. So I guess if we want to really circle it all back here and tie it up neatly, uh, chat, don't get in your own way. Like, you're the thing you can control. Just do the thing you want to do. And I know I'm saying this is someone that's terrible at taking this advice, but, uh, you know, that's, that's life. Life is giving people good advice and not following it. So get good at following good <laughs> advice. How about that? I found. Um, I, I, found I can tell you if I write anything, thing. you'll be the first person to see it. Awesome. Because Me or the entirety are... of chat? No, just you. Oh, man, chat. I don't know. We can build a little council. Okay, cool. Yeah, I would love to read anything that you wrote. 100%. I had the opposite experience where I like am used to talking improvisationally 
for hours of the day, and so that transitioned into writing for me. Oh, so I right. The direct opposite way from you. Something that I thought, as you mentioned, going from writing to casting. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited to see all of the stuff that you get up to. There'll be lots. I'll, probably too much, but it should be fun. I love being around people who have energy to do fun things. It's so cool. Oh, yeah. It, I definitely have a lot of energy. I, yeah. uh, I would consistently get told at work, like, how are you so awake? It's X time in the morning. I'm like, what do you mean? We're about to make a about to make a TV show. How are you not excited? <laughs> I'm definitely an energizer. It's one of the reasons I like working with people. I'm good at giving people my energy. And yeah. I have almost boundless amounts of it. I should probably like filter some into my own work, huh? Yeah, if you can. Look after yourself. Some things belong to you, too. Oh, very true. Thank you for hanging for out, chat. I guess I'll go figure out cat girls now. That's my next mission. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> all right. Be careful. Tread carefully. Look up the nuclear um, hack. That's kind of wild. That's a fun one to read about. Okay. Can't wait for that. All right. See ya. See ya. The run isn't over yet. I've been getting so lucky with runs finishing exactly at the same time as um, guests change. I've been like taking it for granted almost. Pastry time is lovely. I didn't ask him if he wanted to plug anything, but you can find him online by searching for pastry time. He's definitely a name from... Uh, How do you follow a pastry? He was a name from like so many hours of watching League broadcasts and then one day he was hanging out in my chat and I was like, wait, I know you. That was so exciting. Sometimes you have just the most serendipitous um, meetings with people in the world of streaming. He's one of your favorite shot called League of Legends games ever, Heimerdinger Jungle. Gosh. I don't know about Heimerdinger Jungle. Should I know about Heimerdinger Jungle? I may have actually watched that game. Um, but I, I still would be lying if I claimed that I knew about it. I have it go the other way too. Sometimes I will be in someone's chat and like it's often like not even anyone who is in like the strategy gaming space and I'll like subscribe or ask a question or something will be like, oh my god, you're Jorbs. I watched so much of you playing Slay This Fire when I was playing it myself to get up to Ascension 20 and stuff like that. So it's a nice little small world here in streaming. The player with the most mastery points on any champion plays exclusively Heimer Jungle, somewhere in silver or gold. That feels like a great example of what we were talking about, and like it's fun to try to work out what your teammates will do. You're a Captain Flowers kind of guy. I, I I don't believe you have to be monotheistic when it comes to casters. I believe you can uh, believe in and enjoy all of them. I mean, I would be slightly better if I had any attacks. This is kind of a weird run. I don't understand how to play Watcher. I seem not to be losing as Watcher, though. Mmm, doggy. I'm going to stretch my legs and fill up my drink, and then I will be back, and you are going to teach me all about speedrunning Kaizo, and I'm looking forward to it. I will ask pointed questions and enjoy listening. I'll be right back. Tomorrow, 
Tomorrow. Tomorrow. It will be the new year. And I will be beginning it by going to a friend's place and watching the extended edition Lord of the Rings movies. Back to back to back. Probably not, though. I'll probably get bored at some point. Also, I have a 9 a.m. thing on uh, Tuesday, so I don't really want to be out late. But anyway, I'm going to do that. And I just realized I will be able to drink a beer out of this mug while I watch. It's the tree of uh, the, the people. How are we doing on New Year's Eve? I'm doing really well. How are you? I use an ancient at client, so I don't know about announced pinning messages, chat out, or anything like that. Yes, and I also don't have like notifications thrust in my face or numbers yelled at me. I love it. Some things that are old are just better. Gondor, you nerd. Wasn't that an example of me not being a nerd? Signature move. Move. I didn't play it that time. I just wanted to say it again. It's fun to say. Signature move. Signature move. Wait, is that Ray saying signature move? What is the Ray clap? I'm so excited. But I don't want to click on it. I'm not that excited. I'm like, you know. I'm excited, but like in a polite way. Does anyone in chat have fond memories from 2023 or exciting aspirations for 2024 that you would be willing to share? I would love to hear what y'all are excited about. If you would like to share. Take claw more. This is your aspiration. Love it. Nice, Levin, Sarah. Congratulations. You adopted a cat a few weeks ago? That is incredible. That is lovely. That is wonderful. I hope it is settling in nicely. What time eater is it? Yeah. Uh, signature move! <laughs> that's a more that's a more true signature move. Twenty twenty three was bad. Hoping twenty two four is not as bad. I think it's going to be great. I think it'll be good. Good year for work for you. Making taking a much bigger role in decision making, which is cool. It's gonna feel good. A bit more agency, maybe. We connected with your aunt and uncle. Nice. That is a wonderful thing to do. Got a new cat. Awesome. Graduating college this year. Very, very cool. Six years and you're ready to be done. Understandable. Got an e-bike and you replaced more than half of your car trips with it. It's really nice. That's really nice. Spent a lot of time with your close friends. Took a trip to Vegas with your wife earlier this month. Aww. Did you just... Did you just say your wife was one of your close friends? Because I know that that's, like, obvious, but also it's so lovely. <laughs> Love that for you. 
butt kayaks that showed up in the middle of winter. You're excited to float on them when the sun comes back. I love kayaking. I'm excited for you. Got a big promotion from warehouse function to a nice office job. Nice. I'm enjoying K dramas. We decided to learn Korean. Awesome. Saw the fall of House of Usher. What was your favorite show of 2023? Nice. I really enjoyed it. I watched it in like one night or something. I like went really hard on that. Hacked a nuclear facility and demanded that they started cat girl research. I believe you. A Ziggy. Thanks for the $500 donation to support for you to love. Thank you so much. It's incredibly kind and wonderful and helpful and yeah, every all of the good words. Thank you for that. Have many simmering furies lately. Simmering fury is kind of a sweet card now. Learned how to care about yourself this year. Looking forward to extending that to 2024. Nice. Yeah, that's important. Denise turning two personality showing even more as she keeps learning to talk and express herself. I don't have enough children in my life. Kids are like... I think a bit about how... Um, how people of different ages have different types of energy and experiences. And I'm missing, like... What does the world look like to a 10-year-old right now? I just don't really know. I feel very out of touch 